Welcome to lecture number 55 of the series Unreal 5 for Arcways and in this lecture we'll learn about one of the most distinctive feature of Unreal Engine and that is Nanite. So let's get started. First of all let's talk what actually Nanite is. Nanite is actually a feature in Unreal Engine which can improve the FPS of the viewport by dynamically decreasing the number of polygons of static meshes depending on the distance from the camera. It's a completely non-destructive technique and very useful for the static meshes with very high poly counts and because of this feature, you can bring in millions and millions of polygons into the scene without crashing your PC. Okay? Let's now learn how you can enable Nanite on your static meshes. Let's say I want to enable Nanite for uh, this cushion. So what I'll do is, I'll simply select this cushion. And I'll open this static mesh. And I'll simply check this box. Enable Nanite support. And I'll apply this change. And that is pretty much it. There is absolutely nothing more you need to do. Okay. Similarly, there is another way you can enable Nanite on your static mesh, especially if you have multiple static meshes. You just need to select those static meshes on which you want to enable Nanite and just press Ctrl B on your keyboard to search for those static meshes in the content browser and simply select this option enable Nanite for selected. And now Nanite is enabled on these static meshes. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about these artifacts. We'll deal with them later in this video. Okay. Yeah. Now to learn how actually Nanite works, we need to view these static meshes in Nanite clusters. We can do that by going into this view mode option and under Nanite visualization, you need to select clusters. Now that we have seen these static meshes in Nanite clusters, let's now learn how Nanite actually works. Okay. Now you'll see that when I am getting towards these nanite static meshes, these clusters are increasing in number and they are also getting smaller and smaller, which means that nanite is increasing the number of polygons, hence giving us more and more detail. Okay. But when I'm moving away from these nanite static meshes, you can see that the number of clusters are decreasing and they are also getting bigger and bigger. And what's actually happening in the background is nanite is dynamically reducing the poly counts because now we are at a distance from these static meshes. And we no longer can see those minor details because of course we're not close enough to see them. So what Nanite actually did is it reduced the poly count, hence giving us more frames per second. Okay. This is something that is very similar to level of detail or LODs in the game engines in which we have different variants of a single mesh made for a specific range of distance. But LODs are very time consuming and they are not as much as efficient as Nanite. In the next lecture, I'll show you what actually LODs are and I'll show you how you can apply them on your static meshes. Okay. For now, what you need to do is you need to apply a nanite on all of your static meshes, especially those static meshes, which have a very high poly count. So what I'll do is I'll go into my 3d models folder. Let me increase the camera speed. Okay. And, and right now we are having about 27 to 26 FPS in this living room area and about 16 to 18 FPS from this angle and somewhere around 17 to 16 FPS from this angle. Okay. So let's now start applying Nanite on all of our static meshes. First of all, let's go into the bathroom folder. Okay. I'll select this folder. I'll go into geometries and I'm going to filter out the static meshes. I'll press Ctrl A to select everything and I'll enable Nanite. Let's save everything. Yeah, we are having those same artifacts in here as well. Let's see how you can resolve these artifacts. So for that, I'll go into settings. I'll go into project settings and I'll search for ray tracing and I'll simply uncheck this box ray trace shadows. Now, as you can see that we don't have any sort of artifacts. Okay. Yeah. One final thing that you need to know about Nanite is, uh, let me find a position. 
Yeah. Let's keep it here. Let me hide the foliage actor. Okay. Now one final thing that you need to know about Nanite is Nanite does not work with skeletal meshes or deforming meshes. Okay. For example, the geometry cache of this water simulation, Nanite will not work for such deforming meshes. Similarly, you cannot apply Nanite on this curtain which is blowing. Okay. Yeah. Another downside of Nanite is Nanite does not work with those static meshes which have translucent materials. For example, these curtains have translucent materials. Similarly, this glass window has a translucent material. Same is the case for these two glass doors as well. But Nanite does work with those materials in which the blend mode is set to mask. Okay. Similarly, Nanite works with the foliage as well. But this was not the case back in Unreal Engine 5. It works with Unreal Engine 5.1. Okay. Yeah. Let me hide this foliage actor. And let's now start applying Nanite on these static meshes. I think the bathroom is complete. Let's go into my 3D models. And I'll open this bed folder. And I'll apply this static mesh filter. I'll select everything. And I'll enable Nanite. Make sure you save everything. Let's now go into the bedroom items. And I'll apply this static mesh filter. I'll select all of these static meshes by pressing Ctrl and A and I'll enable Nanite. And it will take some time to prepare the shaders. Let's save everything. These two are actually glass doors and they have a translucent material. So that is why after enabling Nanite on these two static meshes, we have some weird shaders. Okay. So I'll just select both of them and I'll press Ctrl B on my keyboard and, and I'll disable Nanite for these two. Yeah. Similarly, let's go. Yeah. Let's select this bookshelf and, and let's enable Nanite. I'll save everything. Now I'll go into this books folder and I'll apply the static mesh filter. I'll select everything. And let's enable Nanite. I'll save everything. Now I'll go into this couch one folder. I'll select everything and I'll enable Nanite. Okay. I'll save everything. Now I'll select this folder and let's enable Nanite. I'll select this one. I'll select everything and let's enable Nanite. Okay. I'll select these curtains. I cannot apply Nanite on these curtains because they have a translucent material. If I'll apply Nanite on these static meshes, we'll see that we have some weird shader. So, so make sure your Nanite is disabled. If you have any other material applied on your curtains, which is not a translucent material, you can apply Nanite on your curtains. Okay. Just make sure you don't enable Nanite on those static meshes which has translucent material and those static meshes that are deforming like this blowing curtain. Okay. Yeah. Let's go into the decors folder and I'll select all of them and let's enable Nanite. Let's save everything and now I'm going to apply Nanite on the exterior. So I'll select all of these static meshes and I'll enable Nanite. Make sure you save everything. 
let's now select this uh, fountain folder i think this is the fountain pot yeah let's apply nanite on this one as well yeah this one looks okay let's go into the kitchen cabinets and now i'll apply nanite on all of them i'll save everything Now I'll go into kitchenwares folder. I'll select all of them by pressing Ctrl A and I'll apply Nanite. I'll save everything. Yeah. Now I'll select this table. I'll select everything. And uh, let me select this one. I don't want to apply a nanite on this object. Oh, sorry. These static meshes and I'll enable nanite. Okay. Now I'll select these walls. I'll select all of them. And I'll enable nanite. Okay. Let's save everything. And uh, similarly, we have windows. I'm not gonna apply nanite on these windows. You can apply nanite on these frames if you want, but I'm not gonna do that because they are very simplified static meshes and they don't have a very high poly count, okay? Yeah. Now what I'll do is, now I'll apply nanite on foliage as well. So first of all, I'll select uh, this European hornbeam folder, the tree pack folder. And I'll select the static meshes on which I want to apply nanite. And and I'll enable nanite. Okay. Let's give it some time to prepare the shaders. Okay, so Nanite is now enabled on all of these trees. Let's uh, save everything. Let's now do the same thing for the grass as well. I'll go into Megascans folder and I'll select 3D plants. I'll open this folder and I'll select these grass static meshes and I'll enable Nanite. One more thing that you need to do is you need to check this box, preserve area, okay, so that your grass doesn't disappear from a distance. Check this box for all of them. I'll save everything. Let's now do the same thing for the trees as well. I'll go into geometry and I'll preserve the area. Okay. Okay, so we have applied nanite on everything we have in our scene. Let's now unhide this foliage actor. And let's see how many FPS we have in our scene. Right now we are having about 30 to 31 frames per second. Beforehand from this angle we had somewhere around 17 to 18 FPS. And right now as you can see that after applying nanite on all of our static meshes we have somewhere around 30 FPS. Okay. So yes, Nanite is a very distinctive feature. You should definitely use it. Not only it gives you some extra FPS, but it also reduces the size occupied by these static meshes on your disk. And it also decreases load on your computer. Okay. 
It is possible that Unreal Engine crashes while enabling Nanite, especially if you are enabling on multiple static meshes at once. So try to keep things easy and don't enable Nanite on too many static meshes at once. Okay. So yes, that's it for this lecture and in the next lecture, we'll learn about LODs or level of detail. Okay. So yes, I'll see you guys in the next one.